Today is a very special episode of Part of the System, as it's NADOC Week. NADOC Week celebrates the history, culture and achievements of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, and there is no better man to speak to than today's guest, which is David Bowmond. A proud Wirrindjura man, which is I think from the Central West New South Wales, born and raised in Sydney, Gadigal country. Now, David is the Senior Community Engagement Coordinator Aboriginal Community Development at the City of Sydney Council. And in his role has redefined a new narrative as the city that underpins and guides the vision for the new direction on Indigenous strategies, its plans and its policies. The new narrative celebrates a living culture's achievements and contributions drawing from the past to paint a picture of the future the narrative underpins the city's main strategies, including the Aurora Journey and the Reconciliation Action Plans, and flows into other areas of work at the city. Now, I know David's an avid tennis player, and I'm really excited to chat to him today about all things tennis, sport, and NADOT Week. So welcome, David. How are you? G'day, David. I'm well, thanks. How are you? Yeah, great, thanks. And um, thank you for, for giving us your time today. So we'll jump straight into it, David. So what does wellbeing mean to you? Just a quick first one, I'll do a quick acknowledgement of country, if I may, David, um, just to acknowledge elders past and present um, and acknowledge uh, the sacrifices they've made and the paths that they have forged in keeping our culture and communities strong. Um, so to your question, um, yeah, uh, wellbeing, with what does well-being mean to me? Um, yeah. I, I think uh, f for me, it's 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 about um, body, mind, spirit. So I say uh, emotional, spiritual, physical, and mental for me. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I I think you know there's some days where, uh, where as a kid, <laughs> I I was I was um, unstoppable and and um, I surfed, I, I did athletics, I did tennis. Um, I'm so grateful that I learned to play tennis. But I guess the point I'm making is, is you you have an injury physically, then then see, you, you, your mental aptitude and your emotional aptitude help you balance that out in those tough times and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of sport, particularly in tennis, you might see that um, the emotional part gets the better of their physical aptitude. So. So for me, uh, I, I, I always strive to find um, uh, the, the balance, um, knowing that uh, those lines of, of can can change dramatically at any point. So uh, how I sort of um, proactively keep abreast of all those all those um, important um, uh, um, spirituality, emotional, mental, and physical. Um, mm -hmm. And and I think that that correlation in sport, the thing I love about tennis, and I'm blessed, David, that I learnt that as a kid, um, is I found, although I didn't know that as a as a child, that that I'm a I, I, this gift I've started applying to my everyday life, and uh, I think um, the example for there for me again if i can use tennis as the example is finding that equilibrium and um i i would for me it's my equilibrium i, I don't impose mm -hmm. that on anyone else um and and uh you know you can look at the greats men and women who who found their equilibrium and you can and you can look at those who didn't necessarily find their equilibrium and and you know the story tells itself so for me um that was a gift that I didn't necessarily see when I was learning this beautiful I call ballet of sport or sport ballet, which is tennis, that incidentally doesn't have, you know, a, a, a finish time like most other sports do. And so how do you prepare yourself for that, um, mm. again, mentally, spiritually, emotionally and physically? And that's one of the beautiful things that, that I like about tennis, which which is, is, a, is, is that gift that it took me a long time to realise. Um, uh, that was staring me in the face. Um, so yeah, equilibrium for me is, um, you know, what goes up must come down and finding my equilibrium there was, 
you know, the more you sort of uh, rejoice on a point, well, you know, it can come that back you you know, in spades if if and then you're going to go down very quickly. So it's that that that's what I'm referring to with the equilibrium, uh, and again with 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 life, um, you know well-being being well um my mother actually uh said to me um she was in southeast asia and uh she travels a lot that's my foster family um mm -hmm. and uh and my, and my you know people people over here say um oh did you sleep well and it's like over in southeast asia they say well you know the reality is did you wake well right <laughs> and it makes you think about it it's like, yeah yeah it's a really good point you know because you actually don't know if you slept well you get up feeling yes i woke well so I'll just put that out there too. Yeah, I love that. I mean, it's uh, well-being. It can be different to to everybody, can't it? And then you bring in different cultures, uh, for sure. But equilibrium, so balance, I think, is 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 really important for you. And and you found that through tennis, because uh, sport can yep. can teach us so many great lessons and disciplines, can't it? Which we can take into our own life. Um, and this connection that you've got with sport then, um, tell us a little bit about your story, David, and then, yeah, and then maybe how sport kind of links into that. Yeah, so I, 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 I was born on the block in Redfern, some, some you know, your um, people might know that geography there, and um, I was made a ward of the state, um, right. and, uh, and I was... Uh, um first about the age of two um uh i was put into a uh, in a boys home in campbelltown or something and i've got files on myself which is 450 pages of them and my beautiful oh. family the beaumonts I, I grew up on um in the north shore in mossman and um uh um and i i that's my beautiful family um however i never got to meet my mother my heritage goes back fifty thousand years in this country it's my mitochondrial strain if you want to get really technical, <laughs> technical with it is is called m42a so that is my that is my bloodline which goes back fifty thousand years in this country wow and in a sense that's what nadoc for me represents our ancestors and elders um uh conceptualized this 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 uh, this 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 idea to draw attention which is which is you know to, to the status and treatment of aboriginal and torres strait islander people and so whilst there is an opportunity to celebrate it i think we also have to have you know we hear the term truth telling we have to have a better understanding of the reality of policies that that have affected uh, all of us um uh, in this country and 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 one of the things i'll, I'll talk about later i hope David is is mm. um, becoming the greatest expression of ourselves, and and in a sense that's that's what my challenge was. I I hit rock bottom, so mm. um, you know I I I absolutely hit rock bottom. Uh, I went to a Catholic boarding school where I was you know in the eighties where I was um, caned beyond belief, wow. uh, you know mocked for the color of my skin and for my heritage, and um, the, what that did was make me strong, and it never blew out my eternal flame. You see, and um, I didn't know that at the time, but I'm thankful for it now because it made me stronger. Mm -hmm. um, it realized, it made me realize, and I and I say this, um, you know, uh, I believe firmly that my ancestors um, have have uh, one eye on me, and uh, you know, and and uh, and and protect and guide and nurture me and navigate with me on this journey. Um, but the other beautiful things, I mean, even surfing for me as as a as a as a young as a kid, you know. I now refer to that as 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 the pulse of Mother Earth in a sense because, you know, those beautiful uh, waves um, are also a beautiful indicator of again the equilibrium. You know, um, you can be surfing on the peak, but you can be in the trough too, and you've got to be careful, you know, and and treat that with respect. Um, so yeah, that's just a you know very small um, uh, snapshot of of of. Uh, um, of my my journey there, uh, David, but just very quickly at the City of Sydney, I've been there about fifteen years now and work in the Indigenous Leadership and Engagement Unit. So, mm -hmm. as you said in your introduction, um, you know the previous narrative that was imposed on all of Australians that 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 you know called us dysfunctional <laughs> mm -hmm. um, was there for a coercive reasons, you know, and and in some instances it still is there and it devalued us. So in short, um, we've changed that narrative. We own that narrative. We brought that narrative back in to bring a value proposition. And 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 I always said to myself, if I don't value myself, 
mm-hmm. then why would anybody else? And I realized that I'd become introverted by by allowing others to to um, uh, dictate, determine who I was, why I was, where I was, and when I was. And I realized, mm-hmm. wow. So I'm thankful that I woke up to that, David. And again, that experience in boarding school was that. Um, and in a sense, if you think of the, um, if I can use a, a sort of a, you know, the cicada metaphor, they live underground and they come up out of ground. They come to a high ground on a tree or a post or something, and then they shed their they shed their skin, you know. And we know many animals do that, mm-hmm. and it's probably one of the most beautiful uh, transitions. And I think, in a sense, that 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 was my transition. But importantly, um, my choice is to challenge myself. Which sport did it taught mm-hmm. me how to challenge. Um, and just finishing on this point, you know, um, uh, um, uh, you know, become the greatest expression of yourself, but but continue on that journey to make sure that that, that you aspire for that every day. Um, mm. To 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 um, to to work on that, you know, and 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 um, that that takes a lot. That takes a lot. <laughs> but but sports given me that. Yeah, wow. Uh, thank you for sharing your journey there, David. And yeah, being so vulnerable with, you know, how challenging you found it in your early life. And, you know, I think you can, people can take two roads, can't they? They can, they can become conscious of that and then use it as a strength and, um, and in a positive way, you know, in terms of taking that on and, um, and, and trying to, as you've done, you know, write a new narrative, I suppose, um, uh, an influence. And I'm, I actually love the analogies that you keep giving. It's like, you know, with earth, um, you know, mm. with the wa- waves and, um, and then the cicada, it's, um, it's, it's, it's great. Cause I don't think we really realize, or I think we're so busy a lot of the time, don't we? Like we've got this natural beauty around us, um, mm. which was here for a lot longer than we were. <laughs> um, and will be too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And yeah, um, yeah. You, you touched on NADOT Week there, mm-hmm. and I think that this year's theme is Heal Country, focusing mm-hmm. on embracing and valuing mm-hmm. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's cultural mm-hmm. knowledge and understanding of country. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what does that mean to you? And um, yeah, have you got any any thoughts on the challenges and opportunities? Yeah, look, um, I also just want to give a shout out to Uncle Phil Bly, who's not only a dear friend, but also uh, a mentor and a cultural mentor for me. Um, and uh, there's a lot of wisdom that that Phil has chosen to share with me. And, and you know, in doing that, that that is endemic in, in, in our transitions of knowledge. Right. And, and so with that blessing, um, uh, you know, I, I, I bring a lot of that into as, much, as best I can without imposing it inviting mm-hmm. people into it, mm-hmm. um, into, uh, as I say, our ways of thinking and our ways of doing. And um, <clears throat> so, so there's a, there's a, there's a, a great, there's many great um, um, sayings that uh, Uncle Phil has. And one of them is, um, you know, how, how do we, how do we live in this land with joy? Right. You know, I mean, it's, it's such a simple question. It's so powerful. Yet no one has actually asked that, David, in this country, you see. So so at the city, I, I hope to, you know, again, um, just gently bring those into to, uh, everything that I do. Um, the I think I've gone a little straight from your question. Can you can you remind me what what it was <laughs> I was going to drill down on there? Sorry, I do go uh, I do go some uh, some context and <laughs> no, not at all. We're just talk, talking about here the theme of Hill Country and Near Dot Week. Your country, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for reminding there because the other important point there is um, you know as Uncle Phil says, we are country, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, as I sort of say at work and for myself is is well if you if if we're not championing advocating um petitioning uh, uh agitating um in pr- principles of designing with country caring for country then are we really inviting aboriginal people into right um you know the the future as as you said in my thing i i, I draw on my past to paint the picture of my future mm-hmm. so we need to really understand clearly what 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 that means um and so again, we are country. We need to. We need to be. I think there's an opportunity for this country. Uh, this country to understand better before it goes to the undertaking. That's what I call mm. it. We need to understand better before the undertaking. Often, what we see is we jump to the undertaking without the understanding. 
So an example of that is, you know, socially, environmentally, economically, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people need to be in every part of the co-creation and co-designing. In other words, if we want to coexist, we have to co-create. And that needs to have financial, social and economic benefits. If there's not there, then um, what I call the other opportunity that we have, and I call my cultural contract, is my aspirations are for true meaning, not just meaning to be true. Right? So, so if it's only meaning to be true, then slap an Aboriginal word and name up there. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the meaning to it, like a great piece of art, if you don't have mm -hmm. the narrative and the story on a corporate wall, mm -hmm. then 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 you, you've taken away the value of that. And that's in that's in a sense what the narrative did that was imposed on all Australians, David. Mm -hmm. The narrative only told one part of the story. Mm -hmm. And it was very one dimensional, right? I'm being very polite here, but <laughs> but that that I, I say to people, don't come to me with your one dimensional education, fedication of our multi dimensional capabilities, right? Okay, people go, oh, what? see, and so that's the stuff. And and uh, you know, for all the brothers and sisters who are incarcerated in this country, um, uh, it is an absolute blemish on this country. And I am lucky enough to have been given an opportunity where I have found my voice. Mm -hmm. And so I stand firmly in that, in my well-being, mm -hmm. what I call, there's a sacred geometry that underpins our living cultures. And that sacred geometry for me, David, is, is ideology, mythology, wisdom, knowledge, transitions of knowledge, and all those beautiful things. Mm -hmm. And if they're not there in that, in that beautiful narrative going forward, then again, I call it just meaning to be true, and I call mm -hmm. it artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So that's the opportunity that we've got in this, what they call the cusp of, uh, you know, we're on the cusp of a cultural renaissance. Everyone wants a piece of us now. Mm -hmm. He wanted a piece of us 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so we, we need to own that cultural and intellectual property too as First Nations people. That's our responsibility. What institutions need to understand, corporates and governments that are undertaking uh, reconciliation action plans, they need to understand the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And for us, should we choose to take up our responsibility of the carriage of our culture, mm -hmm. then, then we start to chart a course on partnerships, David, mm -hmm. not relationships. There will always be a relationship with a partnership, but there won't necessarily be a partnership with a relationship, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have the relationship with this land, mm -hmm. with one another. We just don't have it as best we could, should and would mm -hmm. with the power structures in this country. So mm -hmm. I'll kind of just touch on that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And mm -hmm. what I'm hearing, it's still a choice, right, for Tor Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples in terms of going on that journey, um, because from what you're saying, you know, Sometimes it can be a bit tokenistic with, is it a name, you know, but there's there's much more, there's multiple dimensions to that. And it's really looking at every part of the system um, in terms of the involvement of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to, you know, try and, I suppose, change, educate um, and influence, um, you know, the um, organisations and um it's you know that cultural kind of awareness and and coming david from from england and um, 12 years ago you know it's uh mm -hmm. it's it's y y i'm learning all the time you know um in terms of what 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 the history and you know and what what's happened and um you know there's obviously a lot of work to do and, and maybe nadot week is, is one small part of that um but in terms of your work um at the city of sydney and you know around aboriginal community development um, yeah, tell us a bit about that and how that's been going. So um, I guess we've touched a little bit on what I refer to as um, the 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 cause and effect, right? Yeah. So the policies that were written and enforced to exclude First Nations people from every part of society, David. My 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 elders, my ancestors. Uh, grew up on a mission, if I can call it that, grew up, they were herded into a mission, concentration mm -hmm. camp. This is in Wellington. Mm -hmm. Most of my mob from there, um, Wiradjuri, just correcting you on your, your pronunciation <laughs> at the front end there, Wiradjuri, right? And 
And so what I talk about with that you know, we're on, as again, Uncle Phil refers to, we're, we're, there, there, there's not a traditional and a contemporary, you know. What what there is, is there is a continuum, you see. So thank you again, Uncle Phil. Um, the, the, what I refer to this is the cause and effect, yeah. So the cause is the laws, yeah. The effect is what we're languishing in today, right, cause and effect, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens if I just turn, turn those two words around? we come up with effect a cause. Mm. So what I've realised on my journey, David, is I'm going to do my best with my cultural contract to effect a cause, yeah? Mm. And that's what we try to do at the city, mm. is, is aspire for true meaning, not just meaning to be true. So when I talk about what does leadership and, 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 and a future look like to me, you've got to call out the haze, the maze and the glaze, right? then you chart a course through the haze, the maze and the glaze, yeah? So unless we call it out, which is what the concepts of truth-telling, which is what the concept of, um, you, you know, a voice to parliament and, and written into the constitution, those sorts of things, that's calling out the haze, the maze and the glaze. And now let's chart a course through the haze, the maze and the glaze. But if only one group of people are going to chart that course, then, right? Mm. Yeah. So... Um, the other the other point I wanted to just touch on there is when you asked me about healing um, uh, well being and you know it, it's a pretty basic thing you know you eat eat well sleep well <laughs> hydrate and exercise right that's what I do yeah um, and um, I think part of the guiding principles um, I I always suggest to people with with whatever we do in in this um, journey of us at the city of Sydney aspiring to become the greatest expression of ourselves. Mm. I'm not imposing a vision on people. I'm just suggesting that if that's what we agree to become the greatest expression of ourselves, the same way I had to do that, David, to transform my life from being on rock bottom, um, that gave me the ultimate challenge. And then what it did is, is, is it opened up the possibilities of Oh, I like what that sounds like, becoming the greatest expression of ourselves in a global city. Um, and then, in a sense, people evolve and activate and agitate in their sphere of influence within their immediate individual worlds, professionally and personally. And that's the stuff, as a great saying, that someone can't do everything, but everyone can do something, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I, I sort of suggest whenever we work in the Indigenous space, um, it's it's with humility, it's with integrity, it's with authenticity, it's with dignity, and it's with money. If you don't have one of those five things, then ask yourselves, what are you doing? And so what I sort of try to do is is apply those things with with our team, acknowledge EDCO and Preston Peachy. There's only three in our team. I've uh, been there 15 years, and we're only two years old in that unit. Mm. So it's not telling people what to do. It's it's co-creating the outcome, and equally as important, it's the process and the procedure and the journey to that outcome. Mm -hmm. um, and and again, using some some you know humility, and what I talk about too, David, is is contrition, you know. Um, and Just and often that. explain that for me, contrition. Yeah, con to, to, you know, um, con contrition is 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 about in a sense giving something up, right? Yeah. So when we go down to the deep, deep, deep core issues of sovereignty never ceded, yeah. Mm then we start to see another rule of thumb for me is it's not what you see in here, it's what you don't see in here. That's that because we're seduced very easily as human beings, right? So when I when people say, oh, can, you know, show me a, show me a, a reconciliation, I, I see culture five pages in, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, that doesn't that doesn't tell you how much you value our culture, our living cultures. Mm -hmm. It says a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So often, often those things talk more to so so again, contrition for me is is well what what is one willing to give up here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not necessarily saying that, that that you have to give something up. Uh, I guess an example is the Indigenous cultural and intellectual property rights, right? So 
just touching on this it's 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 a huge area but mm. um I, I can't I, I couldn't explain it in a couple of minutes for you but um uh i can def you know i think that might be a bit of homework for everyone around what is what you know being being contrite in that in that, so you know power right mm. we're starting mm. to see um you know a, a broader conversation of diversity in the, in the in the halls of power and if you think about uh ruth gator uh ruth beta ginsburg apologies if i got her name wrong uh, she was a, um, um, an amazing Supreme Court judge in America and um, a very diminutive physical figure, mm. but has left a legacy that mm. will no doubt live on for many, 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 many years. And I do hope it does. Mm. And all she ever wanted was wherever decisions were being made that she sees women in those rooms in Birmingham. Yeah? Yeah. And what a beautiful thing. And that's part of the thing, David, about contrition, you see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not you know, I'm not telling people what to give up. I'm just saying, well, what is it that you don't see when there are decisions being made or what is it that we don't see in that process or what is it that we don't see in the outcome? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And how do I we think... measure that? Again? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. Fantastic, David. I mean, there's so much wisdom in what you're talking about there. I'm definitely going to have to watch the recording back just to <laughs> just to catch it all. Uh, yeah. And but I think leadership, isn't it? Leadership really is, is doing things for others. You know, um, and, you know, when people are making decisions, having people reflective of the demographic that they're making the decisions for, I think, is important. So you have that ownership in um, is, you know, I'm simplifying it a little bit, but I suppose putting it into my into my language. And um, I think, you know, we, we've talked about chronic chronic conditions in Australia previously and um, you know, one in two Australians has got a chronic condition. And according to closing the gap report, um, I think on Aboriginal people, Australian Aboriginal people die roughly around eight to nine years earlier than non-Aboriginal Australians. And I, I know there's a lot of variables in that, you know, low socioeconomic areas, etc. Um, but if you could nudge one part of the system to improve the well-being of Aboriginal people, what what would that be in your in your eyes? Yeah, that's a really good question, David. Um, and and to be honest, um, I think I'm going to bring it back to, back to the narrative um, because um, I think the opportunity that we have that I've seen transition and evolution. The question is, did we evolve to devolve? And the reality here is when one group of people came to these lands and said to another group of people, you cannot talk the language that you made up. Yeah. You now have to talk the language that we couldn't make up. The example there is, let's count it out. How many languages make up the English language? French, German, Latin, Greek, uh, Spanish, there's five. And, and I doubt that, I, I, I dare say there's, many, there's more, right? There's five mm. languages make up the English language. Mm -hmm. And when it was imposed on these lands, um, you know, terra nullius, well, what's that, David? That's Latin, yeah? So you see what I mean? Um, so the I think for me the disruptor is, is, is the important thing for us to start to recognise and, um, uh, as I call, redress. Um, and we can't address going forward if we don't redress the past right so so the important thing for us is to is to see the opportunity of how we choose to construct every letter of every word of every sentence of every paragraph of this co-creation yeah and and i think that's the opportunity that presents itself but there needs to be as i said before the the opportunity of you know um, the the elements of power in this country coming with humility and contrition, right, mm. in asking about a partnership. And I'll give you an example. When you look mm. at the when you look at the you know the symptoms that Mother Nature is telling us in this mm. ancient land, in in and look at what's just happened in Canada, right? Four days, I think, of 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 uh, temperatures in the high forties, right? Mm. These are symptoms, you see, and that's mm. that's the point, right? And so, so it's not good enough. And I will paraphrase as best I can former ministers, um, current ministers in in a certain government, 
um, saying when when they sucked all the water out of the Murray Darling Basin and they said we can't make it rain after a million fish died, right? These are mm. symptoms of the problem. So so then you look at the other, you know, you look at all the other environmental problems, again, symptoms of the core issue. And when you look at the core issue of um, European antiquated systems that are imposed on these lands, we are now seeing in a very short time, 200 odd years, the, the symptoms of these problems. Um, and by, by dismissing and denying the Indigenous voice and knowledge, which needs to be paid for going forward, then these are some of the opportunities that I see that will benefit socially, environmentally and economically. Mm. And then we've got the three in there. So, so sustainability is one thing, David, but we also need to do that ethically. Yeah. Mm. See, and so, so that's that's the point. Um, you know, drawing on that sort of philosophical approach and the idea, the, the ideology again with Uncle Phil, where in mind, is Indigenous ideology is power in creation, and you look at Western ideology, if you can call it that, it's power over creation. And what are we seeing now? We are seeing the symptoms on a biblical scale of what power over creation has done and the legacy that's leaving, David. There is an opportunity with humility and contrition to get a better understanding before the undertaking, to invite First Nations knowledge holders, keepers, and it's their opportunity if they wanted to share that. But the ground needs to be cultivated with that humility, and I do not see any humility in these current federal governments. The way that they continue to, um, I don't want it to get political, but to, mm. the, the 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 you know again, to what you're seeing here, that's what you don't. So those so some deep ideologies there. I hope to share those with people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. wow. I can just share one very quickly with you. I, I kind yeah, of just of write it down. I don't know if you can see that, but um, it's a bit scribbly. I'm just, just can you see that? All right, does that hold up? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I've got there. Um, for me, another thing was, uh, you know, when I had to dig myself out of, you know, the hole that I was in. Uh, remember, I talked, spoke about the value, and mm. and so so for me, it was kind of the figure of eight, right? And mm. for me, it was about David. You know what? You got to present yourself. And when you present, you represent. And if at first you don't succeed, you represent and you stay present. You see, David, now that whole, <laughs> that whole cycle continues, you see? Yeah. And so that's what I aspire to doing, becoming the greatest expression of myself. myself. Fantastic. And, and that, the, the, the figure of eight there that you've just talked about, is that, is that yours or has that been passed down by Uncle Phil? Yeah, no, I made that one up. In 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 uh, another one that I made up, another saying that I made up was um, uh, a man who holds his head high sees all, and all see a man who holds his head high. Right. Mm. And so for me, I realised, David, that I'd lowered my head mm. because I had allowed people to influence, you know, that that beautiful um, eternal flame in me. Mm. But no one ever blew it out. Mm. And that gets emotional for me. So I I realized, and that's the one I was talking about with the power of language and narrative. That that just came to me. And and as you can see, I don't have to write that down. I it and but the only and the present 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 represents that. Um the other one I'll just share with you quickly is um you, you touched on it earlier. Uh we we all play a part, right? And the other one is we all play a part. The question that we have, which part do we play? And see, there's common ground. Now, if you have authority and rank and status and role, and you're on that common ground and you're taking it up and you're not doing anything to evolve mm -hmm. and make things better for everybody, then I suggest you jump off. If you're down here and you know that you can contribute on that common ground, step up. We need to reach down to step up. And if you're above and you need to, you know, support that, come down to the common ground. But that common ground is partnership, David. See, I'll mm -hmm. keep coming back to that partnership. So so for me, that question is, is a rhetorical question. Which part do we play? Mm -hmm. You know, do we play a part or do we play a part? 
well i mean we i think we're all part of the system if you if if you will um uh, but i think that common common goal is really important we, we need to really understand about what we're trying to achieve how we're trying to do it and who we're working with um and that's really systems isn't it david you know it's uh it's a, it's about connecting the dots and working together and we've all got different perspectives you know we all come I would, from i would add in there why too we need to also know why we're doing things yeah because again that that talks to the understanding in in the aboriginal and torres strait islander space david you see yeah. So again, if, if until we, you know, there are decisions made in the constitution of this country where other people can make decisions for us simply based on our race. Now, mm. I guarantee you that the UN raconteur has said that that is divisive and racist, right, and prejudicial, mm. you see. Mm. So until, until those things in contrition are dealt with, <clears throat> then the reality is that we will never become the greatest expression of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think when we look at the opportunities that present themselves um, in, in our identity, mm -hmm. well, well, our identity goes back. We've got two timelines, David, right? One that continues to go back and the one that we share continuing to go forward. But there's an opportunity for us to be more humble in understanding the signature of this place and the people who have that story of this place and this relationship with Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. And that's the stuff that I think it sucks me and gives me hope in going forward. Yeah. And I think it's role models as well, isn't it? Is 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 huge, Dave. Did we, did we, did we take it back to sport? Um I was watching the um Huffy Freeman on ABC last mm -hmm. week and uh and for somebody that wasn't even in Australia in, in 2000 in the Olympics to, to see the pressure on, on her and, and what that meant for the country. Um, you know, we can you remember that time? Uh, we, yeah, 2000, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, were you in the stadium? No, no, no. I wasn't no. lucky enough there, David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, just from a, I suppose, a, a sport culture kind of perspective, did what did that... You know, how did you feel about that when you know Kathy was winning the the gold medal there, and you know, did that have a did that have a, a ripple effect, um, or you know, a positive impact? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Um, I mean, and 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 the legacy that's flowed from her, but but you know, they're 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 also taking nothing away from that amazing achievement and and the mm. discipline, as you pointed out earlier, David. Um, you know, I, I, again, when I do my acknowledgement, it, it's also acknowledging all those others who who, mm. who um, were far less privileged than than um, um, you know. And she worked so hard, uh, Kathy, um, and it's inspired so many people. And it's actually priceless, right? It's a beautiful mm. thing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, to answer your question, yeah, and um, and I think you know she's created uh, you know amazing foundations and legacies from that. Um, mm. Uh, but I also acknowledge the others who, who um, uh, from nothing. I mean, look at Adam Goods. You know, mm. um, uh, you know the, the the legacy he's and and um, uh, made and and left uh, and inspired people. You know, so um, I, I, I'm not going to choose one over the other. I just think they're all brilliant and yeah. uh, have done an amazing thing. And and the application of their sport has has indelibly um, affected themselves, their their community, their families and indeed added to the identity of this country. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Hear, hear, hear. And that takes me to my last question, David. So yeah. Yeah. we've talked about a lot of your experiences and the work you do, but where do you see yourself personally in the system and how do you contribute and influence it? Wow. Um, yeah, look, I, 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 I say at the City of Sydney, um, David, I think you're, you're referring to that. Um, for me, I, I have this little saying too. I, I talk with your soul, not your role, right? And and um, uh, look, another another thing for me that I've observed is, you know, the Western concept um, is, uh, you know, what our leaders don't change, whereas Western leaders do. You see, <laughs> mm. that, you know, yeah. And, and tell, tell um, me more. Tell me more about that. Is that if you're a leader in each? Yeah, so you know, there's a there's an acceptance in the community, um, you know, um, uh, uh, particularly around elder status, which which uh, has evolved through time, but also um, you know, 
uh, leaders. And and it's not to say, um, you know, not, I guess I'm referring more to the political um, uh, systems of of what's referred to as a leader. Um, um, but um, again, the the reference of elder or leader from 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 my perspective is is um, that that that's that's earned, you know, mm-hmm. and and I see so many times um, uh, again not tarring everyone with the same brush, but but I don't see a lot of humility and and, and philosophical approaches in what people anoint themselves as leaders. And I guess the point I make there, David, is um, another observation, not judgment, is is uh, you know Western education, right? Indigenous education is all predicated around. Um, uh, the more we know, the more we don't know, right? Whereas you look at Western ideology, as uh, Western education, you know, it seems that the more letters you have before and after your name, right, the more expectation and entitlement you get. Mm. And when you mix that with the thing that we've all got in us, ego, right, everyone has ego, mm. then that's when it becomes toxic, David, and you don't see the humility and you don't see the integrity. And that's the stuff that that says to me there's an opportunity for us to to refine and define and get better at that yeah mm. so that's what i try to do not not say what am i going to do I, I try to i try to um what are the values and the ethics and the morals and we've got those in spades as first nations people mm-hmm. because we've evolved those over time as a discussion and a dialogue and then tested them and it's not to say again that two can't coexist but when you look at again, sort of political systems and the cycles in which they operate, in in bureau, um, democracies, it's often a three or four year cycle, is it not? Yes, mm-hmm. and that and 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 that that then that whole system you talk about your system, that whole system is then susceptible to those elements of corruption, and we mm-hmm. see that right. So so that's I don't you know I don't want to yeah that's it's a, it's a, it's a, I don't want to digress too much but but for mm. me it's about the approach that I choose to to do and and then if that um if that acknowledges the haze maze and glaze and charts a court through it the haze maze and glaze um those values I know see 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 steadfast in in those times of turbulence and mm. um and that's that's reality. The, the the chaos is there. We see it again, as we've re- referred to earlier, with with Mother Nature and 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 her telling us that you know the symptoms of the problems. Well, well, in a sense, there, there's 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 conflict in 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 the indigenous ways of thinking and doing, um, juxtaposed to the political systems of ways of thinking and doing. You see, yeah. So it, it's those sorts of things, and I hope that makes sense. Not not too too confusing. <laughs> No, that was fantastic. And I just feel that in Western society, we've got it completely the wrong way around, David. So I think there's a, there's a lot of work to do, isn't there? Um, I think you could, of that you equilibrium, could, I think. Yeah. yeah. You could call it um, consumption over ideology or ideology over consumption, right? Mm, mm. So one reference, yeah. Yeah. Well, I've loved your sayings, and uh, there's 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 been a lot in this chat, David. Um, I really appreciate you for for who you are, and acknowledge you, um, you know, in that wholeheartedness that um, that I that I feel from you, and and I, and I see in the work that you do. So, um, I just wanted to thank you for yeah your time today. And is there anything else that you'd like to add? David, just just one last thing. Thank you, thank you for the invitation. Uh, I've known you for for many years now. I I, um, I see an amazing person, um, but also what you've created in 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 um, collective leisure and 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 that aspiration. The one thing I'll find I'll finally sign off on is um, another rule of thumb for me. Two things. One is um, um, people shut down when you tell them what you're going to do, but they open up when you show them what you've done. Right. And then the other one is. And I made this saying up too. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, when I meet someone who's always right, I know there's plenty left. <laughs> so I know I've just spoken for a lot, but I do hope that people see that more as a, as a, as a, you know, sharing my insights, not telling people what to do, more so just sharing insights on this beautiful journey of becoming the greatest expression of ourselves. So again, um, you know, when I meet someone who's always right, I know there's always plenty left. So so let go go. 
like I always say, you've got two eyes for two reasons. One's instinct and the other is intuition. And allow those to be a part of your journey and complement your education in whatever form that presents itself to you. So, so thank you, David. What a beautiful way to finish. Okay, David, take care and I'll catch up with you soon. All right. Thanks, David. Thanks, Speak buddy. Soon. Bye. Oh, bye. Bye.